Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and today we are here for our 17th podcast, courtesy on TV Studios. 17. We are at 17 now in Lake Orion, where I saw the sign that says, uh, we're living as a vacation. How It doesn't get any better than this, does it? <laughs> Is is that how you feel every time we do a podcast? Uh, it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that thought. That's right. great. Right. Okay. So, welcome, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to vacation. I know. <laughs> okay. So, here with my studio engineer, co-host, and as always, Arm Candy, Chris mm-hmm. Gully. There we are. Hello. Yep. So, I want to wish you a happy National Afternoon Tea Week. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. While you're on vacation here. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And today, I thought we would talk about this amazing holiday and observance. Mm -hmm. Talk about how and when it was created. Uh Uh-huh. The origin story. The origin story, right. And this doesn't seem to have as many different iterations as some of the ones that that we have had origin stories Uh where there's several different ones. But this is probably because it's in a recent... It's yep. fairly recent. The day is young. The day is young, exactly. So we'll we're going to talk about the holiday, the observance, how we have celebrated it mm-hmm. in recent years, and then in tribute, thought we'd share some of the afternoon tea venues that we have been in in the British Isles, uh-huh. and then we'll wrap up with a tea room visit that was it's it's closer to home. Mm-hmm. It's in New York, uh-huh. and it was fab. It was fab. Okay, so let's get to that, but first, tea. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, today's selection is Earl Grey. Uh-huh. But this Earl Grey is from the tea room that we visited in Hudson Valley right. last month mm-hmm. in Troy, New York. Uh-huh. And they sell their own brand of tea. Uh-huh. This is loose leaf, and I'm going to hold this up. All Can right. you see that? Yes, I see it. Okay. Yep. This is their version of Earl Grey. Yes. And I selected this for two reasons. Usually I have two reasons. Mm-hmm. And one is no big surprise. I love Earl Grey. You, you do. And I found out this week that a famous fictional character is also fond of Earl Grey. That's right. Who could that be? Captain Picard. Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> of course. And, and we're throwing in another Star Trek reference into this, and I, I love it. Uh, yeah, so it's obviously it's not uh, from my uh, reference point. No. It'd be more of a love boat. Uh, what's Gopher going to drink? <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to drink? <laughs> Check with Isaac at the bar. Yep. But anyway, this was in a... A book Mm -hmm. that I have talked about before. It's been featured in our blog. It is Steeped, The Chemistry of Tea by Professor Michelle Frankel. Uh And I'll show that to the camera as well. Very good. Okay. And I was taking a deep dive into the book. Mm -hmm. And at one point she mentions that this Captain Picard summons up. Oh, yes. Well, it's the 23rd century. Oh, okay. And uh, he's he's got uh, a, a machine, and you just you just tell it what you want, and it will uh, atomically, uh, uh, molecularly assemble, uh, and and provide it for you, whatever it is. He happens to be, um, he likes his Earl Grey as well in he, the twenty third century. He does like his Earl Grey, and so I felt. I guess I'm in sort of good company. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're going to talk more about that book mm-hmm. and the chemistry of tea in a later podcast. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Another amazing Star Trek reference. Yes. And also the other reason I picked it was because we had been to the Whistling Kettle right. in Troy uh-huh. last month. And we're going to wrap up our podcast, if we have time, and I think right. we will, right. about our visit there Mm -hmm. okay so i brought back this earl gray for us but i also brought back something kind of uh, i thought different and worth a try blueberry ginger Uh yes and i thought well i'll 
we'll try that when uh-huh. Rob comes on the podcast next. Uh, I, I love that idea. Yeah, sort of dangle that carrot uh-huh. in front of him. Yeah. And instead, we'll use blueberry ginger and maybe even carrot. Uh, <laughs> you got to hit, <laughs> hit all the notes here. <laughs> okay. All right. So now let's get to the tea. All right. What do you go. think of that? All right. Let me have another little taste here. Yeah, so it's definitely, you know, it's got that Earl Grey. So this um, this has a lot of, uh, well, uh, it's a bit more floral, um, and, but it's still got that citrus uh, thing. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, uh, I, I want to use the word, I was looking at my, my flavor wheel, and it was a little more on the, um, um, I guess, uh, uh, jasmine, you know, if you ever have jasmine rice, it's got that kind of, okay. of, of flavor okay. tone to it. So that's my that's my take. I I agree with you. I mm-hmm. I think you you've summed that up quite well. It's maybe a little more subtle than some of them too. Yeah, you, you don't yeah. get that yeah. right. heavy duty right. right bergamot. So okay, very good, very good, good job. All right. Okay, took another quick sip. All right. As we are going to be celebrating National Afternoon Tea Week. I can't wait. (laughs) So this is uh, a holiday that Mm -hmm. is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So not kind of new on the scene. Mm -hmm. It's in the UK, right? It's in the UK. And it's during the week of August. This this month, it's between the 12th and 18th. Mm -hmm. We're right in there. Right. And a lot of... uh, a lot of U.S. tea enthusiasts have sort of adopted this holiday. They should. <laughs> they should. So I thought before we got to the origins of National Afternoon Tea Week, we'd just talk a little bit briefly about what afternoon tea is. Uh-huh. If you're a tea enthusiast already, if you have followed our podcast and our blog, mm-hmm. you're probably pretty familiar with afternoon you're tea. You're educated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and high-minded. <laughs> oh, okay. And right. maybe you watch Star Trek. That's right. <laughs> okay. So, afternoon tea, very quickly, is credited to Anna, Duchess of Bedford, mm-hmm. about 1840, right. contemporary of Queen Victoria. Uh-huh. And at this time, the wealthy folks, their dinner hour was quite late in the evening. Uh-huh. So, when Anna, Duch- Duchess of Bedford, was being served her tea mm-hmm. at about 5 o'clock, mm-hmm. she might have been getting a little... Angry. Uh, peckish. Peckish. Well. Yeah. Yes, That's exactly. The other word. Yes. <laughs> so I think she wanted to enhance or maybe supersize uh-huh. her afternoon tea. Yeah. And she began asking for cakes and breads to be right. served along with it. Get that sugar level up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about the crash. Later. Yeah. And she really liked this, started sharing it with her friends, mm-hmm. and it just took off. Mm-hmm. And it morphed into what we call afternoon tea today. Right. Uh-huh. And it's generally served between 4 and 5, although there's a lot of latitude these right. days. I've seen it as early as noon, all the way up to 6 o'clock. Right. But what does afternoon tea, what's the traditional afternoon tea fare? Chris, do you know what the, there's generally three courses associated with right. it. Right. Uh, that's the, no, we're talking about, so... There's a three, the three tray thing. Right. All right. So, so the cream tea is just tea and scones, and that's that's not really tied to anything. We're talking about afternoon tea. Exactly. And that's uh, an afternoon afternoon tea is not a high tea, which we'll probably talk about later. But right, 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 because we've talked about yep, some yep. of the differences. Right, right, there, right. But but anyway, so they got the, so you got the savory the sandwiches, and then uh, the middle one has. Uh, your uh, pastries, your scones, and, and uh, that sort of thing, biscuits. And then the top are the sweets. The sweets. Yeah. Yes. That's my favorite. Mm-hmm. But, yes, okay, you nailed it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And uh, I would be surprised if you didn't know that just because of all the afternoon teas <laughs> you've got on. I've been on a couple. You have. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about National Afternoon Tea Week. Mm-hmm. And, Chris, I think you're going to find this Pretty interesting because the creator of this week mm-hmm. is an IT professional. Amazing, you know. So he's a uh, he's a good guy already, <laughs> and I've I've uh, commented that uh, you know I've had a forty year career in IT myself, and I made pretty good living basically telling people to turn it off and turn it back on. <laughs> Reboot. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I think you did that just recently. You yes. were a consultant. Uh-huh. And, yeah. Yes. It's, 
it never gets old. <laughs> and you were right. Yeah. So, okay, very good. All right, so the if you want to know more about this origin story, last year in Tea Time Magazine, uh-huh. they, they did a full piece on this when it was in its ninth year. Now, uh-huh. now it's in its tenth. Yep. So if you want to know more, you can check out Tea Time from last year. But the story starts with Keith Newton. Mm-hmm. So he's an IT professional and a tea enthusiast. Mm-hmm. And he's looking for a creative way to use his mad IT skills. Yes, and he's not related to Sir Isaac, correct? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I actually looked that up. Uh-huh. <laughs> and according to mm-hmm. AI chatbot, okay. no link. Okay. So okay. there All you right. go. All right. But kind of interesting that, yeah. you know, you got two guys who are, one creates what? One's responsible for yep. the uh, physics, physics, yeah. and, and the Calculus. other one, yeah. yeah, the other one's like T. T. Yeah. Okay. I great. get it. Okay. All right. So he's looking for a way to be creative with his skills, mm-hmm. and he notices that there's no website for afternoon tea. Shocking. It was. It was kind of shocking. Yeah. So he he sees that you know. Afternoon tea in London is usually associated with the five-star hotels right. like Dorchester or Claridge's. Mm-hmm. And people were often kind of curious that, or, or they didn't know what to do. Right. You know, uh, what do I wear? What's uh-huh. the etiquette? Mm-hmm. How do I go about this? So he said, uh, he, he th- said, okay, I've, I see a need there and an go. opportunity. Uh-huh. So he went to these hotels and different tea venues in London and connected with them mm-hmm. to make this website. Yeah. And, it and, it's, is, and it's really to reduce intimidation, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And just connect this whole group of people who want to come together for afternoon tea. Mm-hmm. So he set up this website mm-hmm. and it's called afternoon tea.co.uk. Right. And it became so popular Mm -hmm. that that became his full-time job Mm -hmm. he started hiring people so yeah he had his own company and this is a full service website Mm -hmm. so you can you can make reservations you can find reviews of different tea rooms etc that's amazing and he's got over 700 venues from ireland and the uk we'll have to check that out we will we will so he started this in 2002 Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2014, mm-hmm. and Keith Newton, mm-hmm. savvy guy, he mm-hmm. says, I want to figure out how to bring more business into tea venues in London during August. He's an influencer before there were influencers. <laughs> I yeah. think that's right. Yeah. Yes, okay. A tea influencer. There you go. So, <laughs> anyway, he... he this is a time in London in August where a lot of locals are on holiday. Sure. They take that month off. Yep. So he got together, he talked to some of the, the venues, and they put together this afternoon tea week. Mm-hmm. And they do special promotions mm-hmm. and s- special tea menus just for this week. Uh-huh. And so it took off. It's now in its 10th year. And I, I love what... Keith Newton said about the purpose of this. It just boils down to this little uh, little statement. Mm-hmm. He said, the purpose is to promote afternoon tea in all its forms, be it simple cream tea at home or afternoon at a posh hotel. That's, that's, that's wisdom. <laughs> it is. So he's talking the gamut, which right. we have right. in all our travels mm-hmm. have experienced. And I also want to note that I think we personally can see the benefit of yes. when an IT professional partners with a tea etiquette consultant. It's incredible. It's a beautiful thing. It is. <laughs> okay, so we we really do hold this holiday or observance in high esteem. Yep. Last year, mm-hmm. we celebrated National Tea Afternoon Tea Week in New York. We did. And we were with our favorite New York couple, Matt mm-hmm. and Jenna. Mm-hmm. And we, do you remember where we went? Uh, was that the, um, not the Ritz, the uh, Plaza. The Plaza. The Plaza, yeah, the yeah, Plaza yeah. right. Yeah. And a very fancy hotel yeah. Yeah. right in Manhattan. Yep. Yeah. You go into the lobby and it's, it's, it's uh, breathtaking. It, it really is. Yeah. It really is. So 
it, it, this hotel started 1907. Right. I think some of the the rooms now have been converted into condos or I, yeah, yeah, yeah. and condos. Yeah, right, right. But they've kept the Palm Court mm-hmm. as a tribute to this time period. Right. It's it's just beautiful. Yeah. Like you said, it's breathtaking. They have the marble columns yeah. and they have that stained glass. Yeah. Canopy, yep. beautiful. They don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> they really don't. Yep. So that was a fun way. We were there during National Af- National Afternoon Tea Week, mm-hmm. and they have great service, great food, great tea. Right. They also, we had discovered afterwards that they had some very famous people who have had tea there. Like, well, besides us? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So it, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh-huh. the Beatles. <gasps> I would, wouldn't it be amazing to have a cup of tea with Sir Paul? Yeah. You don't, I don't even need Earl Grey. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then also the fictional character, Eloise. Oh, okay. A children's book yeah. where she has tea yeah. at the plaza and they have a, a children's menu for, ah. uh, El- dedicated to Eloise. So if yeah. you bring your kids along, Very your good. younger kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've been to many tea rooms in the UK mm-hmm. and Ireland. And we've been to the posh homes, we've been to castles, and we've also had tea behind bars. We have. So I thought we'd talk about some of those highlights. Uh-huh. And i first start out with, since we were talking about Keith Newton and he mentioned Claridge's. Right. We were there in 2015 mm-hmm. and we were there with Matt, Matt and Rachel right, are right. two kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who are they? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Matt and Rachel. Uh-huh. And we started this tradition back in 2006 when we brought the whole family. Right, Rob was right. with us too. And we take the night flight. Yep. And you get into London and yep. it's morning and you're exhausted. You've been up for 30 hours <laughs> because no one can sleep on a plane. Right. <laughs> and And you're just... Just not in the mood. To, all you want to do is, is yep. take a nap. But you you need to not do that because the, then you've lost two days just just adjusting. Exactly. So power through it and power what through it. better way than uh, to have an afternoon tea. Right. So we schedule afternoon tea on the day of arrival, and we right. did it at Claridge's. Mm-hmm. And do you remember much about Claridge's, Chris? Uh, well, it's been a minute, uh, but it was a it was a a, a great venue, and uh, I remember the the service is very attentive, and and uh, um, the 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 food and the tea was was uh, was spectacular. It really was, and and. One thing, I, two things of special note. They have the, the beautiful china that is uh, linked to their mm-hmm. their service. It's kind of a Tiffany blue and white stripe. Uh-huh. And they don't serve it in the tower mm-hmm. or the tiers, but they serve it in trays. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And they had the most amazing desserts. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yep. Works of art. Yep. And I have some of those in, in uh, pictures in our blog. Okay. And... So if you want to check uh, that out, check that out. We'll yep. talk about that a little bit later. But mm-hmm. okay, so then we went to to Ireland, uh-huh. and we went with the kids uh, again, Matt mm-hmm. and Rachel, and I think that was 2012. Mm-hmm. And we had teas both extremes: Westbury right. Hotel, uh, right, five star hotel, uh-huh. middle of Dublin, yep, crazy busy, yep. Go in. Yep. This little oasis. Yes. Serene. Beautiful. Yep. Crystal chandeliers. Uh-huh. Oh, yep. just everything was top notch. Yep. But then we went to the other extreme. We did. We did. Because that's what we do. <laughs> and we went to Kilmainham Jail. Spelled G A O L. Right. We'll have you know. Right. Yeah. We weren't quite sure what this was, but yeah. when we got to Dublin, yep. everyone, everyone, yep. taxi drivers. Yeah, yeah. Go see the jail. See the jail. Yeah. See the, jail. the Irish are built different. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Yeah. So they had a tea room there. Yes, they did. It was more of a kind of cafeteria, yeah. but they called it a tea room. Yeah. With uh, replete with uh, iron bars on the windows. Right. Yes. Uh, because as if the story isn't sad enough. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the place yeah. is just so yeah. sad. Yeah. But they, that you do have the yeah. Yeah. bars on the window. So. Yeah. And then it's also the scene. So this is a uh, you know important uh, part of Irish history, you know very turbulent uh, part of Irish history where 
uh, there the uh, the uh, the uh, some uh, uh, Irish partisan was uh, um, captured by the British Army and uh, tried and condemned to be shot, but he was very ill. He was wounded or something like that. Right. So, so, right. So they they uh, they put him on a chair, tied him to the chair in the corner there against the wall, and there's this plaque and everything, and and um, executed him there, just a few steps away from where we were having tea. So, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. But it's so significant, though. I mean, it really does make you pause, right? Because I, this is what caught everybody's attention, right? Like. This yep. was the last straw. It, it was, yeah, yeah. We need some dignity yep. here. So right. it was, it was, uh, it was great to be to see that part of of history right. and understand where yep. all that came from. Yep. So, yep. So yes, so we were we're behind bars, but yep. we escaped. Yep. <laughs> and uh, then I would mention we had we have had tea at some castles. We have. And when we were in Scotland, we had tea at. Holyrood Palace, mm-hmm. you and I did, uh-huh. uh, and uh, in Edinburgh, in Edinburgh, yep, and that was a while ago. That was, right. I think, 2018. And it's not a fancy tea room. No. It's kind of in a, a place adjacent to the palace, right? Very, very modest, I'd say. But mm-hmm. the the tea was great. Mm-hmm. Service was great. We also, and we just recently had tea with Matt and Jenna in, at Preston Field That's in, right. in Edinburgh, right? Which has royal connections. Yes. It's beautiful. You could take me back there again. All right. Even with the bad park. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, what else have we? we uh, Rachel and I, when she did her study abroad in 2012, we went to a few fancy tea rooms and we went to the mm-hmm. Kensington Palace. Yes. And they have an orangery. That oh, was, it was once yep. part of the right. palace. And right. Now it's a tea room. And Rachel, I think she, that was one of her favorite tea rooms. Yes. It's very modern, very yeah. bright. Right, right. But they also serve tea there from one of England's only, it's their only tea plantation. Uh-huh. And it's called Tregothanen. Okay. I always have a little trouble with yep. that. All right. <laughs> yep. But they, so when we were there, it's only been around for 20 years. It's in Cornwall. Yes. So Cornwall's kind of a, it's at the lower lowest tip of uh of uh of england mm-hmm. proper mm-hmm. and i mean there's some part so and it's it's a butts against the uh the, the gulf stream right so the temperatures are you know in com- comparatively speaking fairly temperate uh, there's actually I, i've read that there's uh, some islands off the coast actually have palm trees you know it's Oh, so, yeah. Okay. So it's a little bit of a, a micro, uh, what do they call it? Uh, microclimate. microclimate. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense yeah. because you don't normally think of no. uh, that having the climate for right. tea plantation, although we have one in northern Michigan. We do. So we do. Yeah. Uh, anything's possible. Yeah. Okay. And then we had tea at a couple places that stood in for Pemberley and a couple of filming sites. Right. Uh, the, we went to Lime Park mm-hmm. and we went to Chatsworth. Yes. I think Chats uh, Lime Park is the one that we should really talk about. Well, yes. Yeah, so uh, it was one of our trips. We, we we like to drive, and so we had our, our GPS. We have, we punched in Lime Park, and start driving. Um, and so the thing, the kind of the the fun thing and the dangerous thing about traveling in in England is it's uh, you know compared to the United States, fairly small and compact. Mm-hmm. So you can get lost. <laughs> um, and we're so we knew the. Uh, uh, the state was in the Peak District, and I'm, we're driving along, and we're noticing a distinct lack of peaks, you know, in our surroundings. <laughs> so finally, uh, we get to our, um, we were like uh, way off. Right. It was, uh, you know, it was some apartment, you know, complex called Lime Park Estates. Oops. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, it, it was just sort of an yeah. ordinary yeah. town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we had, we were way out. What were two hours? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I called Lime Park. Yeah. We had had afternoon tea reservations, yeah. and I said we're going to be a little, a little bit late. late. Yeah, yeah. And they said, "Don't worry yeah. about it. We'll we'll keep a table open for you." Right. But this was a place. This is Lime Park. So this was the outside of Mr. Right. Darcy's Pemberley. Right. 
in the BBC 1995 version. Yes. My favorite. Uh huh. And the thing that you could do here, though, was if if you had enough time. Yeah. If you didn't take a <laughs> side trip to wherever. <laughs> they have a closet where you can put on period costumes and have yeah. your tea. Right. So we kind of missed that opportunity. Yeah. And then I was darn. Thinking, yeah. I was thinking, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Did you get off track? <laughs> no, no, I would never. <laughs> no, do that. you would never no, do that. No. Okay, so in our short time left, right. I think mm-hmm. what we've had five minutes. Yep. Okay, uh, just real quick, wanted to talk about the whistling kettle. Yes. In Troy, New York. Yep. So and we were... you so want to say Troy, Michigan, don't you? I, I have I? I, <laughs> yeah. I may have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. We lived in Troy, Michigan for yeah, yeah. over 20 years. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, it was, uh, it's a hard habit to break. But this is Troy, New York. And we were there for a couple of reasons. Yep. Gilded Age tour and also to visit family. Yep. And we were there with Matt and Jenna. Uh-huh. So after our tour of the Gilded Age, which we are going to feature in a future podcast, it's mm-hmm. going to be so exciting. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot wait. But they, we went to have tea at the Whistling Kettles. It's in right. downtown Troy. Right. Mm-hmm. And on our way, we we passed some of the places on our tour. Right. Like the, the store that stands in for Bloomingdale's. Uh-huh. And also yeah. Mrs. Astor's Brownstone. Yes. Where yep. uh, she would not receive. No. No, she would not. New money, Mrs. Russell. No mm. way. Uh. But Whistling Kettle, they welcome everybody. That's right. And so... It's a big place. Uh-huh. They have a dining room. They right. have two dining rooms, yeah, actually. Right, right. One in the back, one yes. in the front. Very expensive. And a nice retail spot mm-hmm. in the middle. Mm-hmm. And we got lucky. We had we got to choose a, a seating in the front window, right. uh-huh. observe the outside patio yep. and the street scene. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Mm-hmm. And they had two team offerings that I found very interesting and unique. Yes. The first one was what they called the tower. Yes. And it's their version of afternoon tea. Right. You can pick a savory. I had a quiche. Mm -hmm. Your second course, you can choose from a salad or soup. Mm -hmm. Last one, you can choose your flavor of scone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to make reservations ahead of time. Because show up. (laughs) Understandably, most places need at least a day. Right. But this is just something nice. You have an afternoon tea fix. You want to get that? Yep. You can have it. They serve it every day. Yep. And then you had. It broke all the rules. It did. What did you I had, I had a uh, BLT scone. I was eating a scone as a sandwich. They call it a scone witch. They do. They do. Those Americans. And <laughs> what's what was kind of fun is they have different variations. So they have a vegan offering. Right. But you right. had the BLT. Yep. They have the ham and cheese. Yep. And. What we say in proper tea etiquette yes. is that if you're eating a scone, yep. you don't eat it like a sandwich. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the scone witch, yes. you can, oh boy, you can really get yeah. your yeah. mitts around that and eat it like a cheeseburger. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have a feeling what... We got about a uh, little over a minute. A little over a minute. So we're yeah. going to be hearing our own whistling kettle <laughs> soon. Go. All right. And just a couple things I want to remind people of right. is that we have all this information on our blogs, yep. and we soon we're going to put on the website and right. our blog all references to the blogs that we talk about during our podcast. Yes. So if you want to know more, yep. you can do that. And... We, okay, are we hearing that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think we are. (laughs) Okay. All right. So, I want to wish everybody a very happy National Afternoon Tea Week. There's still time. All right. Thanks to my co-host, Arm Candy, Chris. Yep. Thanks to all who are listening and on TV. And we'd like to say, please, stay tuned. Excellent. Okay. See you later.